Hi everyone, Skeins and Sticks here with the video tutorial on how to embellish your Gina vest. So as you can see here, um, here's the embellishments that I've created. Now, um, on the pattern itself, it doesn't specify, it basically says look at the picture to get the embellishments. I leave it open-ended because um, some people may want to have a little bit more, you know, inches in between or they may want to do it as they wish. So I left it kind of open-ended, but if you want to have it exactly the way that I have it, then this is what this tutorial is for. So, or and just to show you how to do it in general. So let's start with the vertical lines the vertical embellishments are a little easier in that they kind of sink into the pattern perfectly or into the fabric put it that way perfectly i love that about the vertical um you can barely even see it on the other side here you see it there um the horizontal ones are the ones that are a little bit more tricky so let's let me show you how to do the horizontal ones since that those are a little bit easier to create now i did talk about using tunisian crochet hooks for this pattern um just because of the point if you watched my earlier video on the waistcoat stitch in general i talk about the tunisian crochet because i just i love their points here Get more in focus. Yep, and that's my dog. So there you go. Um, so here's a set here. I will leave a link to this in the profile down below of the YouTube video in case you want to look at them and think about getting yourself a, a set. But so this is a 5.5. Let me get the five. Here we go. And I'm using my swatch actually to demo how it works. And I have here my top stitch color. Here is all the colors that I use in the. I'll leave a link below to these as well. Okay. All right. So. First thing you do, you're going to do your, your step stitch as normal. All right. Now, the key to the, vert the vertical embellishments are you're working in between the stitches. You see here, in between the rows or columns, put it that way. Because if you think about a grid, a grid has rows and then columns. Okay. So let's think about that when we're thinking about this. Um... Our squares here so we're going to be working in between the columns so you have this half double crochet waist curl stitch column and then this half double crochet waist waist, waist, waist stitch column blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay so and what I did is just enter in as normal and like you know you have to decide which side to keep the yarn on your working yarn I found that keeping it on my right side kept it uniform, but you know, depending on what works for you. So I'll put it in, you're going to slip stitch that first stitch. Okay, that was just a slip stitch. The whole thing is gonna be slip stitches, okay? That's how you work this. So that's in between. So now I'm still working in between the stitches. So you go to the next stitch here. Okay, and I'm just slip stitching. Keep it on that side. We're going to the next area here. Okay. And then we're going to go into the next area, and then let's see what I got. OK. 
Okay. And then you see, it just flushes in there beautifully. Here is a tip. If you want them to kind of be a little bit more hidden, like, I mean, this is pretty hidden. I mean, this is fantastic. You can use a smaller hook. And it's just going to make them a little bit smaller, right? So this is a, a three. And I just... Same old thing, switch, um, slip stitch in the middle there. And it's going to result in the exact same texture. It's just going to be smaller in terms of the stitching, okay? So you just play with it and see what you like. I mean, is it, you know, much of a difference? So this, the vertical one's super simple. That's all you do. You slip stitch in between. You'll see it. If you just, you know, pull it open, you'll see it. And then it'll just, it'll flush in as if this was part of the stitching all along. I love it. I love this embellishment so much. And then when you get done, you're just going to weave in the end. So you take this, stick your tapestry needle in here so the needle comes there, and then, you know, work it in the back to where it's unseen. So that is the way you do the vertical stitching. Um, easy to take off. No. So let's talk about the horizontal stitching. Those are the interesting ones. All right. So the horizontal lines. Now, I'm just going to go as if, see, I have these guys here. So let's talk about those lines. We'll do that as our example. Let me move around my stuff so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Okay. So now the reason why I picked this side is because these ends, this is, you know, the patterns work bottom up. So those are the half, um, the foundation half doubles. So it's going to be very similar to the foundation half doubles here. So you can see kind of what I did. Um, here, you can see that the foundation half doubles are left alone. So I worked the stitching right on top of the foundation half doubles. So, sorry about the barking. That's just kind of part of the course right now as we're all at home. Um, and things are happening. So, anyways. Uh, same thing. You are going to slip stitch. Now, here's a trick about the horizontal way. Okay. For the horizontal, what's cool about this and what I attempted to do, you see how the horizontals are barely noticeable at all on the wrong side. Okay. Same for these guys. Look, you don't see it at all really. Um, you see the verticals somewhat, but the horizontals, not very much at all. Why is that? Because for the horizontals, we are working into the post or the legs, okay? But not really into the legs, but how about around the legs? That's a better way of saying it. So, let me see if I can... All right, perfect. You see those right there? Okay. So, I'm doing my slip stitch. If I can get in there, okay. There you go. In around the legs. So that's where the slip stitch is happening. Now let's pull it off from the other side. And you for your first one. And then here you go. Next one. Yeah, this is very, very tight. Okay. So, and you see, and you just keep on going that way. So, horizontally, you're slip stitching, catching both posts. Okay. So, I'll do this one so you can follow along a little bit better. Let's see. 
okay and these two see them in here into both of those guys picking both posts okay and just slip stitch and you just keep on going all the way across till you get here um so that's how you do that and like i said if you you know maybe it'd be a little easier if you use a smaller needle just to stick in there but it totally worked with the needle that is recommended um so that's how you do the verticals and that's how you do the horizontals now um for the buttonholes you just take a tapestry needle go in and out in and out and around the tapestry needle let's go around so it's gonna look a little wonky but you know that's how they look um for this you see how it's kind of a curve so you just horizontally go into the post so you see how it's this one then it'd be this one instead of going straight across you know you're going this way so you just make a little V in this light. Okay, and this is the horizontal. So, and the pockets will be, you will see, because when you make your, when you make your pocket, you have the 18 stitches. That's about, I believe it's either four, if you remember. Yeah, so it's four, four inches, 10 centimeters. It's not centimeters, okay. This is my fabric, my fabric measuring tape. So, four inches. So, that's about the length of that, okay. And I just put them right under where the pocket begins. And then make that point right in between. So, what? That'll be two inches to where the, the guy is, the point, all right? Same for your button. You go in the middle. Um... And I just went down about f four and a half. Okay, so your pocket is four by four and a half. And that's about when the pocket lining, when I say make the pocket lining, that's about what I give for what the pocket lining should, should measure. So just follow that measurement. Now, the horizontal stitching, top stitch for the bust line is right at the bust line and that is when you start working the arm you'll know where the bust line is so when you start working the armhole that's the stitch you want to start working the top stitch when you finish everything so just look for where the armhole starts and then do your horizontal line for the the uh, top stitching there it's just at the bust or um, a better way to look at it is right on top of the pocket. So right on top of the pocket is where you're going to have your top stitching for the bust line. Same so over here, right on top of the pocket. Okay. Um, and then the pockets are lined with the top stitching. So a vertical. I did the horizontal here like the buttonholes. Meaning I just took a tapestry and went in and out, in and out, in and out. Because that's, that looked more authentic to an actual denim jacket to me. But you could do the horizontal top stitching as well. Whatever you prefer. It's a kind of a laissez-faire pattern for the embellishments. Um, so same thing down. And then you have your pocket there. So uh, Let's see here. What else? Uh, the bottom measurements is about a quarter of an inch you can see here so about a quarter of an inch but like i said kind of gauge it however you want it to be but it's um about three rows three rows and i start the horizontal right on top of the foundation chain then I do a horizontal, three rows, horizontal top stitching. For the buttonholes and button side, it's about a half an inch. 
um, and it's about a half an inch, which is also three columns. See there. So, um, and then the back. This is purely going to be what you feel comfortable with, okay? Um, so, the cross back is just a couple of rolls up from, oh, I'm not showing it, okay. A couple of rolls up from where the armhole shaping starts. Armhole shaping starts here, and then you have here, which is sort of midway through. The armhole so you want to do midway through if, if you want to follow exactly or you can even just pull up a picture of a denim jacket on online and do a google search and do images and look at how they have it um so you can kind of gauge it that way but then i just went halfway halfway up and then went across and here of course the, the center is going to be bigger than the two sides and you're gonna gauge that for I, this is mine is a medium size, so it was four and nine and a half, and this is a little bit more than four. So this is definitely not an exact science for for this one because I just kind of did it embellish it how I thought looked best. So that's how I did that. Okay. Oh, I still love this thing. It looks so much like a jean jacket to me. Um, and those are how you do the embellishments and the tools. You need a measuring tape so you can figure out what you want. Um, oh, I didn't say. For the embellishments on the pocket flap, the chest pocket flap, these are just going to be... A tapestry needle in and out okay don't know what that was so I just did in and out tapestry needle super simple and so that is how you embellish the Gina jacket with the authentic looking denim jacket look um, any questions, post them down below. I will post down the materials that I use below. Also, before I go, I am going to show you what I use for the buttons. Because I did something a little bit different for the buttons. Um, these I got on Amazon. Now, I will put these in the link as well. But I freaking saw these and I fell in love immediately because... They're also different, but they are all branded jeans. It's just so cool. Um, oh, that one says jean. Yeah. Jean fashion. Uh, I don't know. I think they're super cool. They have cute little ones and all kinds of ones, but... What's really cool about these is that they are no sew. So you don't have to sew them. You have your... This is how you administer them. You stick them on. You will need a mallet or a hammer. And you will hammer them on. So... And my dog is very talkative today. So... Um, See, yeah, here you go. This is what they look like. Super simple. And they were only like, I think, nine bucks on Amazon or something like that. So I'll put the link in case you want to try these out instead of um, sewing the buttons. But they're 20 millimeter buttons. And I love that they have the little things on them. So I tried different things. I don't know. I just really, really, really like using them. Um, and you just stick them in between the stitches, hammer them down, bada bing, bada boom. Um, you will have sometimes, if you pull it too hard, it can come through, but that's just a matter of, you know, being careful with your, with your buttoning and unbuttoning. But if they do come off, 
easy to stick it back on. <laughs> so that's a, a benefit to that. But so those are the buttons I use and I think they're amazing. I love them so much. They are non stitch buttons. They're perfect for what this is. And that is it. So again, any questions you have, leave them in the comments or email me, Arika at skeinsandsticksdesigns.com. Happy to answer any of your questions um and walk you through the pattern as much as you need if there are any mistakes found please let me know i try my best to not have any mistakes but you know things happen so and things are overlooked like i remembered today that i forgot to put 20 millimeter for the buttons i just said eight buttons but you need 20 millimeters if you want to be authentic to the pattern that i as i have listed it so thank you for watching <laughs>